what's up YouTubes so uh, yes today is day one of my little musical odyssey and uh, I'm gonna be looking at Locked Out of Heaven by Bruno Mars because that's the song that my band used to open sets with um, so uh, yeah I guess the first thing that I should do is uh, listen to my band playing the song uh, and then listen to Bruno Mars's band playing the song and compare them and see what I can do to improve. So let's do that now. Okay, so, um, um, right, the Bruno Mars, um, arrangement, the original, the original arrangement, I just call it the original, the original arrangement of the song. Um, it's great. Um, it's, um, it's got, um, just, just a couple of elements, uh, going on, but they are very big, warm, full sounding elements. And, um, the whole thing works really well as obviously, um, so it's a little bit of a challenge to try and recreate that with, um, just bass drums and guitar and, uh, no synths. So, um, let's see. So, um, I'm overplaying quite a lot um, on the uh, on the guitar. I'm doing stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be there during the verses, um, because you know I've got this idea that more is more and more is better, and that's not always the case. Um, the chorus has no. I have I have no way of getting to the chorus and having the chorus be bigger if I overplay the verses. So I need to simplify the verses uh, right down. Um, one of the exciting things about the Bruno Mars thing is the, uh, the, the, the bit leading into the chorus, which I'm going to call the bridge. Um, it has this, um, synth kind of like riser, like it kind of goes. So the, there's a build up so that when we arrive at the chorus, there's, it reaches a peak of something or other. Um, that's going to be, um, I don't know if I can do exactly that because I'm, I play guitar, not synth. Um, but maybe I could have, um, a flanger effect, or maybe I could have some kind of filter sweep on the guitar or something, something that goes like, and it arrives at, uh, the chorus, um, in the chorus, what I have been doing with the band um, more recently, I don't have a video of this yet, but what I've been doing more recently is a kind of like the edge inspired stereo delay, uh, thing, which works quite nicely, but listening to the original song, it doesn't do that at all. It's actually very simple. It's just a, you know, um, there's a four to the floor clap thing. There's, uh, just loads of bass and loads of bass synth and a very simple, um, synth melody line. Uh, playing on top of that. There's very little that the actual guitar in the song is actually uh, doing. <clears throat> so my focus for the chorus should really be on the synth melody line and uh, maybe, uh, you know, filling in um, the bass a little bit if I can to try and make it sound, uh, you know, bigger and uh, ballsier. So uh, yeah, um, that's, uh, that's what I think I should uh, do there. Um, so I guess without further ado, I should go and get my guitar and Helix stuff and, uh, get them set up and, uh, have a playthrough. Uh, somewhere on my computer, I've got a multi-track file of my band playing the song live that I can strip the guitar and vocals out of. So you can just hear bass and drums. And then I'm going to, using my current settings, um, just, uh, you know, play the guitar along with it. And then I'm going to critique that and uh, come up with a better sounding helix patch for this particular song. Now, what I'd like to try and do is have one helix patch, which I can use for all of the songs that I do with the covers band. I don't know why I want to do it this way, because I'd probably be better off having a different patch for each song. But then we play so many songs in so many styles that if we have a different patch for every song, I'm just going to get lost. So, uh, minimal, uh, minimal patches. Um, 
this is going to be an ongoing thing that I'm going to figure out as I go. And it might be the case that the uh, patch for this song changes as I learn more songs uh, later on. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Anyway, look, I've waffled on long enough. Let's go get the guitar and let's go get the helix and let's have a little play. <laughs> So that took way longer than I thought it would. I'm, uh, I'm rustier than I realised. Uh, my hands hurt. <laughs> the guitar's in desperate need of a restring, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. But yeah, sooner or later I've got to change the strings on the guitar. Um, I've made a few changes to the arrangement of the song, like a few changes to the way that I play the song. Um, yeah, it's, it's shaping up. It's sounding better than it did. Um, one of the main things is the main guitar tone, the one which would be in the right-hand channel, is a little bit treblier on the distortion than I would like. It's a little bit too bright. Um, I initially had a kind of fuzz thing going on, like something like Muse would do, and I thought that sounded pretty good, but then it became too bright later on. But then I started having to tap dance across various pedals to get the sounds to work. So... The realisation that I've come to is if I want to do this with the best possible sound quality, which, let's be honest, that's what I want to do, I am going to have to use the uh, Helix Snapshots feature, which is great. It's a fantastic feature. I was specifically trying to avoid using it because the snapshots would probably end up being tied to a handful of songs, and then I'd have to keep changing patches depending on songs, and that's going to add more confusion to the live show where I want things to be simple so that they work you know without me having to think about them because I'm also having to jump around and sing and all sorts while we're playing so I don't want to have to think too much about these things um, however um, sound quality is important so I guess uh, the next step is to incorporate Helix snapshots into the sound. And again, also, I don't want to get too bogged down on this one song because I've got a whole heap of songs to get through. Um, we're probably going to be gigging again in, I don't know, a month or two, something like that. And uh, I've probably got, well, I want to have at least 30 songs ready to go for when we do that. Um... And I don't want to spend all my time programming Helix patches. So I need to get some proper practice in as well. Um, but I'm going to stick with this for the time being. So maybe tomorrow I'll see if I can get this song finished to a degree that I'm properly happy with. And then hopefully that will um, be a foundation to start the next song with. Because it might turn out that all the songs use the same handful of snapshots. I suspect they won't. But you never know, it might be the case. So let's give it a go and see what happens. Anyway, look, that's all from me. Um, thanks for watching. Um, and remember that cats always land on their feet. See you later.